by far the most extensive interview that Miles Brennan has done since he uh, has been on LSU's campus uh, published today. Uh, Cody Warsham, of course, is a digital media uh, uh, manager over within LSU Athletics, did about a 45-minute podcast interview with the LSU starting quarterback, Miles Brennan. Uh, Brennan's done, done some interviews, but not many, and certainly none at this length or depth, which is why it's really, really interesting because you have someone who, as we have discussed, is among the most interesting stories in all of college football. How does Miles Brennan replace the guy who just had the single greatest season for a quarterback in the history of college football? That's not hyperbole. 60 touchdown passes, 5,000 yards, won the Heisman by a record landslide margin. And oh, by the way, here you go, kid. You get to be the guy who replaces the guy. And they had a really detailed, in-depth conversation about all of that. So, of course, that's going to get a lot of attention. We'll go through some of what I thought were the highlights of it, but I could not recommend highly enough that If you are interested in LSU football, which I'm assuming many of you are by the nature of the fact that you're listening to this, that you go, however you listen to podcasts, go search Hey Fightin' Podcast and listen to Cody's interview with uh, with Miles Brennan. One of the odd things, they actually started with uh, a a, a soundbite from an interview with Miles and Emily Dixon, and Miles Brennan talked about how during quarantine he was at home and he didn't have weights, so he took a chainsaw. He cut down trees on their property and used them to do bench press and squats. There's a video from Garland Gillen on Twitter. I don't know how he got the video, but he he tweeted the video, and this is it. It's Miles Brennan with a giant log doing bench press, like laying on some concrete slab with a giant log doing bench press. Um, he was he was not lying, and you could tell by how red his shoulders are that he obviously had that that log on his shoulder doing squats. I digress. So, Miles Brennan has been finding ways, like many have, to stay in shape. And the thing that was most, uh, the biggest takeaways from this interview for me is that Miles Brennan has completely committed every facet of himself to being great. From his physical size, putting on pounds, which you'll hear, uh, his mental acuity, going from Matt Canada to Steve Ensminger to Joe Brady. And I know Ensminger was there, but he talked about the transition in the offense over three years to finally having some stability on the offensive side to losing out the job when he thought he was going to be the starter to sitting behind Burrow and learning to how he's managed his time this offseason with his receivers. He has prepared every aspect of his game, even using one of the things they talked about in this interview is you know the the virtual room that the, the walkthrough room that LSU built in football ops for the defense Miles Brennan wanted to use it for his good so he had Ed Ogeron call in the guy who's in charge of that room from the company that installed it and calibrated it for offense so Brennan could sit in there and go through his progressions against the defense it was a very enlightening interview which proves that Brennan is all in He understands it's his time. He is all in to be the guy. Now, will that result to results on the field? I I don't know. Like, we'll see September 5th when they play UTSA in Tiger Stadium or whenever they kick off the season. But we're going to see ultimately. But listening to this, it's so impressive to think I'm not sure literally there's anything else that he could do or could have done to get himself to the point where he's ready to be LSU's starting quarterback. So a couple of things from Miles Brennan. First and foremost, everyone asks about his weight. That's where Cody started. And apparently this is going to be really a non-starter anymore because Miles Brennan has been between 218 and 220 now, even throughout quarantine. So he's bulked up. He said he got on campus at 175. So he's gained 40 pounds. I mean, it's... 30, 35 pounds is 35, 40 pounds. That's an incredible amount of weight to gain, but he's done it over these last three years. And this is just a for instance of how, of what Miles Brennan put himself through to be able to gain this weight. 
it was very difficult from then to now. Um, my body, I, I guess, is just not made to be uh, have a wide frame, you yeah. know. And I ate more food than anybody can imagine. And the strength staff was on me every single day since I got here. And I was in here at six o'clock, eating in front of the strength coaches, drinking, you know, protein shakes in front of them at six o'clock before class. That's and then, I mean, <laughs> it's funny. There was one time where I came in, and I ate like it was four breakfast sandwiches and drank four core powers <laughs> and I'm, I'm trying to get to class. And Dude, like, that's like 2,500 calories yeah. right there. I'm like, man, I don't feel good. So I ran to the bathroom <laughs> I threw it all up. <laughs> so I didn't tell anybody because I had to restart. But you can see what he's put himself through. 6 a.m. eating in front of the strength staff just so he could gain the necessary weight and he's done it. He also talks about his journey from LSU where he graduated high school on May 30th June 1st, he was at LSU moving into West Campus Apartments. He graduated high school, had one day, and then was on campus learning Matt Canada's system, which is something he had never done before. But then he goes into 2018, where it's supposed to be his job, but in comes Joe Burrow. And he talked very candidly about how awkward this was with Burrow initially. I mean, not many words were spoken. I mean, we both knew what was on the line. Um, and it is very difficult because you're in the same room. You know, the court, you're, you're expected to be the leader of this team, you know, and, and you're wanting to encourage not only the teammates in your own room, but, you know, all the other players around you. But it's just very hard to, you know, cheer for the person that you're competing against after they just threw a touchdown or they just made a good play, yeah. you know, like something that, you know, that the coaches are going to recognize. Uh, it's, you know, it's just hard to sit back there and be like, oh, yeah, you know, good job, you yeah. know, when you're sitting there you know, trying to compete for the same job, you know, but once all, once all the pieces fell into place, um, you know, I, I just told myself, look, like, just use this to get better, you know, like, okay, they named Joe the starter, um, you know, work, you know, harder than anybody on this team every day, and, you know, just make sure that I'm ready at any point in time that I would have needed to go in. So he sits behind Burrow, despite that disappointment, but they become ultimately very close. And now he's the guy who has the task of replacing the guy. And he talked about what it's been like for him knowing he's got to replace Joe. You know, when I get asked those questions, you know, I try and tell myself, like, you know, like he's gone, you know, and he's no longer here and he's no longer going to be playing for LSU. And like, it's time for, you know, me to step into that role. And, you know, I, I can talk about what he did, but talking about, you know, last, even last year's team and what we did last year is not going to, and talking about Joe is not going to help us in the in the in the future yeah you know it's not gonna do any good for us reflecting what we did last year um but yeah i mean it is time to you know I, I, joe's gonna get all the credit that he deserves you know in interviews and things like that but at the same time you know it is it, it's my time you know and, and i i fully understand that and you know i'm gonna do you know everything in my power to to make you know take full advantage of that it's my time and i'm gonna do everything in my power to take full advantage and that's kind of coming through, isn't it? All the things that Brennan's done from getting his body in shape to watching Joe Burrow to even like one of the things he talked about was, you know, working on his touch passes. Like that's been his focus. He talked about how um, Jack Marucci, I want six brain, how Jack Marucci would come out to practice with a radar gun and measure Brennan's, the MPH on his throws and then Brennan's relative completion percentage and basically explain to him, look, you don't have to pound a kid, you know, running back in the chest with the ball when it's an eight yard route, you know, work on that, that touch with the ball. And Brennan said, look, physically, like this has been as far as on the field, he, the biggest thing he's worked on this off season. This whole off season, I really have worked on, on touch and it's a different touch rather than like aiming the ball and like trying to just float it there rather than just like, you know, just taking some off and still yeah. you know, finishing the throw. Um, and so they, uh, I, I know they have seen a difference the receiver wise, because I mean, we, we talk about it after, you know, each practice and you know, they'll joke with me about, I throw the ball too hard, but <laughs> you know, I, I really have, that really has been a main focus point of, of what I've been trying to get better on. Miles Brennan again on Hey Fightin' Podcast uh, with Cody Warsham, a really, really great in-depth interview, the, the most in-depth interview I think anybody's done. Uh, it has to be since Brennan's been on campus. But one more, uh, and Brennan was asked, why amid losing the job to Burrow in an, in an era when nobody waits, why did he wait? I came here for a reason, um, and you know, I, 
I stay true to my word. And, you know, I, I understand why people do transfer. And, I mean, I'm not against it um, any means because I mean, these players have to do what's best for them and their families. Um, but I knew being here would be best for me, especially with this coaching staff and the surrounding staff that's here at LSU. Um, and, you know, I mean, we brought in Joe. And, you know, it, if I would have left, you know, I would have lost these two years of learning behind, you know, one of the greatest you know, football, you know, quarterback in college football. Um, and you know, the, the things that I just took away from him alone have made me such a better player, much less, you know, just being around this team and playing the games that we played in uh, has just helped me a lot. I'm not here to anoint Miles Brennan. I'm not here to tell you that I think he's going to win a Heisman or he's going to throw for 5,000 yards or any of those things or lead LSU to a championship. The thing that I will say is it is abundantly clear that 21-year-old Miles Brennan in every way, physically, mentally, emotionally, everything, is more ready for this moment than he was when he showed up on campus in 2017. And when you look at all of the talent surrounding him, that becomes a very exciting proposition for the LSU Tigers in 2020 and potentially 2021. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.